This is the lobotomizer. Hello everyone, this is the lobotomizer. I teased this in um, one of the early videos for drain damage, and this is a fun little thing that I came up with um, for servicing the robot. So let's go take a look at drain damage and see what this does. So having built a few bots kind of in this similar style, like um, Lolo Man and Long Long Man were both kind of like this, I've learned that servicing them is a little bit tricky. So as you noticed, I put down the piece of tape underneath that elevates it because as soon as this top plate comes off, the wheels are just going to push the whole guts out through it. So that's step one. Step two is figuring out how to get those guts out. And so we lift off the top. And some of you might have noticed these two little circles right here. Um, these little bosses work with the lobotomizer. And then the whole thing just lifts out. It's that easy. So that is what the lobotomizer does. Let's see how it works. So if we take a closer look at the lobotomizer, you can see we've got these two pins, these two 3D printed pieces, and then four fasteners just to kind of hold the whole thing in place. These are the special thing. These are called uh, ball locking quick release pins or ball locking pins or quick release pins locking. There's a lot of different names for these. I don't know what the exact proper name is, but if you go on McMaster car and look for um, quick release pins and look for a locking style, that's what these are. So they kind of have a plunger mechanism at one end, and then they have these balls at the opposite end. And you can see I can't depress the balls, but as soon as I press in, the balls kind of go inside, and then by releasing it, the balls pop back out. So it's actually pretty simple, and all I did is take four fasteners so that it kind of retracts back to its nominal state, right? And then it just kind of bottom out, bottoms out at the end of it. Nice and simple. And then for the 3D printed component, I just have this resets that's in here. And these get printed like that, right? So the layer lines go like this. So it actually works, but there's a lip on the outside of there. And then as soon as I insert this in and press, it can fit inside that recess and it kind of bows out in the inside to accept the ball. And this is locked in place. I cannot remove it, but if I just simply press, it lifts right out. And of course it always works better off camera, but yeah, it is simple as that. Just press down, locks in place, carry this around, do whatever, press it and it lets go. So nice and simple. So of course the idea here is all of these guts are gonna be completely self-contained and there's no fasteners or anything else inside this shell. So I should be able to just take this, plop it down inside, release it, go do the fight with the uh, what is it, six fasteners on top, fasten those, I'm just putting on the top plate. And then when the fight is done, insert this, pop it in, remove it, swap it out with a brand new one, put it back in and be ready for the next fight. I'm kind of sorta of almost building this as if it could be like a house bot or like, I don't know, like a mini boss, like you had to fight this to get onto the next level, something like that. I'm not really building this like a traditional combat robot in any sense. So the idea here is the battery is gonna be very, very tucked in. It's gonna be probably difficult to get to and you're not really gonna to wanna to fill around in this tiny, tiny little bot getting that out. So this, is the easier way to go. Just lift it out. You can do all your servicing of the guts somewhere else and then just pop it back in when you're done. Yeah, it's a bit of just kind of a fancy luxury thing, but come on, that's pretty cool. So when I first started doing combat robots many, many years ago, there really wasn't that much information out there. If you were building a new bot, you basically just had to go to an event, talk to some people there and get some ideas from them. 
A uh, few people had some websites and had a couple like little blogs here and there, but no one really had, you know, like an established YouTube channel that was showing like a lot of information. Now that's uh, much different. There's a lot of people that have YouTube channels and there's a lot of information out there. And so it's really cool to see where this hobby has come. And the new trend that I'm kind of seeing is, you know, custom made tools. Like back in the days, people really weren't doing that much custom. It was very rare to see someone that would modify a motor or modify a gearbox. Now we're seeing like 3D printed gearboxes, things like that. And the coolest thing that I've been seeing lately is, you know, 3D printed tools like this, something that you can use to service the bot or, um, you know, help out during the competition. Um, it's always cool to see like, you know, tombstone on the little drivable sled, things like that. These are kind of those cool little extras. Combat Robots is a great creative outlet for a lot of different design challenges. Um, you know, you've got 3D printing, you've got machining, you've got electronics, and you've got all the material sciences that go with it. And then you also have a lot of mechanical design. So this is the type of stuff that I really like. So I just wanted to share that with you guys because, I don't know, I think this thing is really slick. So. As always, thanks for watching. Be on the lookout for more drain damage videos. One of, this, one of these days, this thing's actually going to fight, and that's going to be interesting. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.